House of the Dragon is a new HBO series that tells the story of the Targaryen dynasty during their conquest of Westeros. The show has been met with mixed reviews so far, but everyone can agree that it's packed with intrigue and political drama. In this video, we'll look at some little-known facts about one of the show's most fascinating characters, Rhaenys Targaryen. Watch this video to find out more about her. First up, Rhaenys had black hair in Fire and Blood. Like many other members of the Targaryen family, Rhaenys has long, flowing blonde hair in House of the Dragon. The book depicts her with black hair, so this is a noticeable change, a legacy of her Baratheon descent, though in her later life, this would become streaked with white. The blonde hair makes sense visually, despite some people's objections to this modification. It makes it clear to the audience that she is a member of Westeros' aristocratic ruling family and establishes her as a distinct dynasty. Next up, Good Queen Alysanne thought Rhaenys would be queen. Good Queen Alysanne was one of the best Targaryens, even though she was invisible on screen throughout House of the Dragon. She possessed all the positive traits of the dynasty and a few of its negative traits. It's therefore very noteworthy that she recognized the potential for Rhaenys to become a future queen. It was one of those instances where Alysanne saw what was right, perhaps even more so than her wise husband. Unfortunately, Westeros' lords disregarded her advice regarding her grandchild. Meanwhile, Rhaenys insisted on arriving at her wedding on Dragonback in Fire and Blood. Dragon control was a significant factor in the Targaryens' ascension to power in Westeros. Their close ties to these soaring weapons of mass destruction served as their signature, and House of the Dragon featured many highly potent dragons. Rhaenys, who naturally rode the Red Queen dragon, was especially attached to Melees, so much so that she even arrived at her wedding on Dragonback. This was a menacing display of power, even for a Targaryen. She should be dreaded in light of what she did in the Green Council. Next, Rhaenys was actually passed over several times in Fire and Blood. Rhaenys, known for being the queen that never was, was conspicuously overlooked in favor of Viserys. Though this wasn't the first time it had happened, it was unusual. As fans of Fire and Blood will recall, her grandpa disregarded her after her father passed away and gave his younger son the throne. Given this, it is understandable why she would grow more and more resentful of the way politics is conducted in Westeros. Eve Best frequently captures this affability of Rhaenys. Now, for Rhaenys' nickname, the queen that never was, came from Mushroom. House of the Dragon decided to leave out some characters when translating Fire and Blood for the big screen. One of them is Mushroom, a diminutive character who would later play a significant role in Rhaenyra's entourage. Rhaenys' moniker, the queen who never was, was concocted by the witty Mushroom. It is one of his numerous remarks about the court that is bitingly funny just because it is accurate, like so many of his other observations. Rhaenys is a person that people should never underestimate, as the course of events will show. Next, Rhaenys' match with Corlys was apparently a love match. Like in Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon has several beautiful connections. The relationship between Rhaenys and Corlys is noteworthy in particular. Even though their partnership is unmistakably political and each partner adds something valuable to the table, it was also built on love. Rhaenys decided to tie her heart to him. Although they are close in the series adaptation, it falls short of the book's portrayal of how deeply these two influential people cared for and loved one another. Meanwhile, in Fire and Ice, Rhaenys' father was Prince of Dragonstone. Aemon, Rhaenys' father, is the source of her claim to the Iron Throne because he was the reigning monarch's eldest son. Book readers know that he was named the Prince of Dragonstone, so by all rights, she ought to have inherited the realm. She would never be able to overthrow Westeros' patriarchy, though for her gender was the one thing that had always prevented her from rising to power. Furthermore, Rhaenys is objected to being passed over in Fire and Ice. Rhaenys is among House of the Dragon's most heroic characters. In the book, Rhaenys vehemently protests that her claim to the Iron Throne should be so frequently disregarded, despite the series depicting her as mainly having accepted that she would never rule. She stands up for her rights, even if doing so puts her in a position of conflict with her grandfather, the king. Once the Dance of the Dragons got going, this element of her nature became more apparent. Next, Rhaenys' mother was a member of House Baratheon. House Baratheon is one of Westeros' most prominent families. Furthermore, it has a lengthy history with the Targaryens. This explains why Rhaenys 
Uranus' father married Jocelyn Baratheon, one of Westeros' most stunning ladies, who also happened to be his aunt. This paternity helps to explain why Uranus shared the same black hair color as other members of this particular house in the literature. It also helps to explain why she had an unbreakable will and was prepared to fight when required. Finally, Uranus refused to attend Viserys' wedding to Allison. One of the most noteworthy occasions leading up to the Dance of the Dragons is the marriage of Allison and Viserys. Even though so many went, Uranus was one noteworthy absentee, along with Corlys. She was understandably furious that Viserys had rejected her offer of her daughter as a wife, so she was determined to make it clear that she disapproved of the union. She was understandably outraged because this was the third time that individuals in authority had so casually discarded her and her family. Next, in other news, some dragons in House of the Dragon explained. First is Caraxes, Daemon Targaryen's dragon. Matt Smith's portrayal of Daemon Targaryen will be one of the show's primary protagonists. Thus, it follows that Daemon's dragon partner will be one of the critical canines in the program. Caraxes, the dragon owned by Daemon, is one of the oldest and most giant dragons in the Targaryen dynasty. Caraxes has been dubbed the Blood Worm because of his red-colored scale. Aemon Targaryen used to ride Caraxes, but after a crossbow bolt murdered Aemon, Caraxes was left without a rider. Daemon, Aemon's nephew, then claimed the beast. Second is Syrax, Rhaenyra Targaryen's dragon. The niece of Daemon and one of the other key characters in House of the Dragon is Rhaenyra Targaryen who Ella Darcy portrays. Syrax, Rhaenyra's dragon, will play a significant role in the program, just like Daemon and Caraxes did. Syrax is bigger than most dragons, even though it isn't as enormous or fierce in battle as Caraxes. Since Syrax's scales are yellow and Rhaenyra named her after a Valyrian goddess, it is most likely that Syrax had never been ridden before Rhaenyra. Third is Melis, Rhaenys Targaryen's dragon. Princess Rhaenys Valerian, King Viserys' cousin, was portrayed by Eve Best in the fantasy film House of the Dragon. Melis is the name of Rhaenys' dragon, just like that of Rhaenyra and Daemon. Melis is a vivid red dragon, like Caraxes, which gave her the nickname the Red Queen. Melis, who will be discussed later, is one of the oldest and largest dragons after Vagar. Fourth is Vermithor, Hugh the Hammer's dragon. King Jaehaerys, the grandfather of King Viserys, was portrayed by Michael Carter, one of the cast members of House of the Dragon. Jaehaerys' former dragon ride, Vermithor, played a significant role in the drama despite his advanced age. Vermithor, often known as the Bronze Fury, is a bronze dragon, once Westeros' third largest dragon after Balerion and Vagar. Vermithor is depicted ultimately being ridden by a brute by the name of Hugh the Hammer during the Targaryen civil war known as the Dance of Dragons, to which House of the Dragon would lead. Fifth is Sunfire, Aegon Targaryen's dragon. Aegon Targaryen, a different figure from House of the Dragon, is named after him in Game of Thrones. As with Game of Thrones, the plot of House of the Dragon will be centered on the Iron Throne. Therefore, Aegon Targaryen and his dragon Sunfire will play a role in the show. Despite being one of the show's younger dragons, Sunfire still has a considerable stature. Due to his brilliant golden scales, Sunfire is also known as Sunfire the Golden. The golden flame that Sunfire has, which appear to mirror the color of his scales, are one intriguing aspect of him. Sixth is Tessarion, Darren Targaryen's dragon. The younger brother of Aegon, Darren Targaryen flies Tessarion, a female dragon. Tessarion, like Melis, is referred to as the Blue Queen because of her wings' deep cobalt blue hue. She will make an appearance in the HBO Max TV series Tessarion, like Sunfire, has flames that glow a vivid blue similar to the color of her scales. Tessarion's belly scales and claws, which contrast with the dark blue of most of Tessarion's body, set her out from the other dragons. And the last is Vagar, Aemon Targaryen's dragon, the brother of Darren and Aegon. Aegon Targaryen, Aemon, also rides a dragon. Vagar, one of the three dragons that the Targaryens used to slay the Seven Kingdoms, is ridden by Aemon. Before being passed down through the generations to become Aemon's mount, Vagar was ridden by Queen Visenya Targaryen during the conquest. Vagar is one of Westeros' most enormous dragons at the time of House of the Dragon, second only to Balerion in size. Vagar is a bronze-colored dragon with vivid green eyes and green-blue accents. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below letting us know what you think. We love hearing from you.